Stephen's irritation peaked upon discovering that his neighbor's semi-truck is once again obstructing his driveway. This deliberate act felt like pure spite, pushing Stephen to his breaking point. Contemplating his next move, Stephen began devising a solid plan. It wouldn't take long before he formulated a strategy. His neighbor would soon regret challenging him. Rushing for work and consumed by rage, Stephen repeatedly blared his horn, anticipating his neighbor's emergence to clear the obstructive truck. Much to Stephen's dismay, there was no sign of his neighbor coming out of the house. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Known among his friends as a laid-back and easygoing individual, Stephen Adams hailed from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He maintained a small circle of close friends, valuing quality over quantity in his relationships. The neighborhood had always been characterized by kindness and friendliness. However, a shift occurred when Tim, their new neighbor, settled in next door. Tim Brown, a divorced man, relocated to Albuquerque with aspirations to launch his trucking business. The atmosphere changed drastically when he opted to operate his business from his residence. The typically Serena street transformed into a bustling hub with the constant arrival and departure of Tim's vehicles. As time passed, neighbors began conversing over their fences, expressing their dissatisfaction with the changes that had befallen their once tranquil and idyllic neighborhood. Stephen, he parks a massive semi-truck right in front of your house, missus, Thompson remarked. Due to being at work during most of the bustling activity, Stephen remained unaware of the neighborhood changes. One evening, while retrieving the mail from the mailbox, Stephen exchanged a wave with his new neighbor, Tim. Approaching Tim with a mix of uncertainty and curiosity, Stephen wasn't sure what to anticipate. Despite hearing numerous tales about Tim from other neighbors, Stephen aimed to form his own impressions of the man. Hello there, neighbor. Great to meet you too, I'm Tim. I've noticed you leaving early with your lady. Gotta say, she's quite a catch. You've struck gold there, Tim remarked with a chuckle, initiating a friendly conversation. With that remark, Stephen began to realize that Tim wasn't your typical neighbor. Engaging in small talk, Tim elaborated on his trucking business. Unaware of the inconvenience it posed, Stephen felt fortunate that he commuted to work by car. He couldn't fathom what his neighbors were enduring, but he was soon to discover it for himself. One bright and sunny Friday morning, Stephen was up and getting himself ready for a day of work. He loved Fridays and couldn't wait to finish so that he could enjoy a quiet weekend. However, as he stepped out of his front door, he was met with an unexpected sight. One of Tim's semi-trucks was blocking his driveway. Is this guy for real? Stephen muttered to himself. Surely Tim knew that this was the time that he would be leaving for work, yet he still parked the truck there. He marched over to Tim and knocked on his door. He could hear music blaring from inside. He started banging loudly on the door now, hoping that Tim would finally hear him. When Tim finally opened the door, top of the morning to, yeah, neighbor, want to join me for some breakfast? I'm making bacon, Tim offered. However, Stephen was not amused. He tried really hard for Tim not to notice how annoyed he really was, but failed miserably. Um, morning. Can I ask you to please move your semi from my driveway? Oh yeah, about that. I was gonna come by and ask if I could park off there, but I got really busy. You see, I don't really have space to park it anywhere else, Tim replied nonchalantly. At that point, Stephen was silently fuming. He just wanted to get to work. How did this guy not understand that? Okay, cool. But can you move it now so that I can pull my car out, Stephen asked. He could see that Tim was going to be very difficult. Um, yeah, no can do, I'm afraid. My driver just left and I can't drive such a big semi myself, Tim responded. Stephen widened his eyes in disbelief. He had never heard anything like this before. Tim, you're costing me my job here and I'm losing time, Tim shrugged, still maintaining his nonchalant attitude. Sorry man, can't help it. Maybe you should talk to your boss about flexible work hours or something. Not my problem, he replied, turning back toward his house as if dismissing the entire situation. Stephen was flabbergasted, realizing that reasoning with Tim was futile. Stephen decided to take matters into his own hands. He stormed back to his house, grabbed his phone and dialed the local police. The police, understanding the urgency, promised to send an officer over to address the issue. Finally, the sound of sirens approached, 
signaling the arrival of the police. Officer Rodriguez, a stern-faced but composed officer, stepped out of the patrol car. He assessed the situation and immediately understood the severity of the issue. Addressing both men, Officer Rodriguez firmly stated, this obstruction is a violation of city ordinances. You can't block someone's driveway, mister. Brown, you need to move your truck immediately. Tim, however, remained defiant. I can't move it right now. My driver left and I can't drive it myself, he argued, refusing to acknowledge the consequences of his actions. Officer Rodriguez wasn't swayed. That's not my problem. You have a responsibility to your neighbors. If you can't move it, I'll have it towed, and you'll be facing fines for the violation as the officer radioed for a tow truck. Stephen couldn't help but feel a mix of satisfaction and frustration. The tow truck arrived shortly, and the driver efficiently hooked up Tim's semi. Tim, now realizing the severity of the situation, frantically pleaded with the officer to reconsider. Seem on, officer. This is a brand new truck. You can't just tow it away, Tim pleaded, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. Officer Rodriguez was not listening. Stephen, feeling a surge of triumph, stared at Tim, who was now left to face the consequences of his inconsiderate actions. The other neighbors stepped out of their houses and watched as the huge semi-truck was being pulled away. Mrs. Thompson saw this as an opportunity to air her own grievances. Officer, we as a neighborhood are not happy with the noise and activities happening in our street because of Mr. Brown's trucking business. Our neighborhood went from peaceful to disruptive in a matter of weeks, and we're not going to stand for it, she complained. A unified outcry erupted from the gathered neighbors, each expressing their discontent with Tim's disruptive presence. Officer Rodriguez, realizing the magnitude of the situation, assured them that he would look into the matter further. Amidst the heated discussions, some neighbors suggested taking legal action against Tim to maintain the tranquility of their community. Stephen, initially hesitant about escalating the conflict further, felt compelled to support the idea. As news of the neighborhood dispute spread, local media outlets caught wind of the story. The media coverage brought both sympathy and criticism to Bear Canyon. While some viewers sided with the frustrated neighbors, others saw Tim as a small business owner trying to make a living. In amidst the media frenzy, a court date was set to address the legal actions proposed by the community. As the judge carefully listened to the grievances and considered the evidence, it became evident that Bear Canyon's tranquility hung in the balance. After weeks of legal battles and deliberations, the judge finally delivered the verdict. Tim Brown was ordered to relocate his trucking business to a commercial area, away from the residential neighborhood of Bear Canyon. While the decision was met with mixed emotions among the residents, it marked a significant victory for those who had fought to preserve the peace and quit they once enjoyed. Tim reluctantly agreed to comply with the court's decision, realizing that his actions had disrupted the lives of his neighbors. With Tim's business relocated, Bear Canyon slowly began to return to its former tranquility. The media attention faded, and the once divided community sought to rebuild the neighborly bonds that had been strained during the ordeal.